then thank you for coming everyone this afternoon to the Northampton License Commission meeting Wednesday, April 17th, 4 p.m. This is um, being Zoom recorded. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev and commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. I think I think it's just, just, I don't think we include Jennifer. Oh, okay, because she can't speak. Unfortunately. Okay, then present this afternoon, just myself and commissioner Helen Kahn. Sorry, and, Jennifer. Sorry, Jennifer. Do we have anybody here for public comment? If you could raise your Zoom hand. And seeing nothing, we will jump right in to item number three. We have a discussion and possible vote to determine whether or not the curtains at the green room prevent a clear view of the interior of a restaurant. And um, so we saw the correspondence uh, with Annie and um, Victor Caputo, who is here with us. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good afternoon, Thank commissioners. Thank you for coming. Um, do you want to just bring us up to speed on what we need to know? Yeah. So, uh, I got a call, um, in regards to the green rooms, um, curtains, um, they have on the windows, they have a clear door, but they have curtains that cover the windows. And apparently, according to the green room, they were in existence before it shut down. They recently replaced them. Our officers went there on a standard bar check and um, told the the uh, proprietor or whoever was working, you got to get, get rid of these curtains. There needs to be a clear view of the bar. Um, that wasn't on our bar checklist. So I reached out to the ABCC and found out that it actually is a regulation under 138 section one. Um, but I was told by the ABCC that this is a like prohibition era law and that it's usually a add on. So if a, a place is, is in violation for something else, they might add on this violation as well. But he couldn't, the investigator couldn't recall a time where they had cited a place just for this blocking of the windows. Um, so um, at any rate, uh, we, did some digging in to figure out, you know, who has the final say when it comes to whether these windows are a, a issue or not. And it's actually up to the local commission to determine whether or not they are uh, a violation. I will say that the inspector or investigator I spoke to said that there are establishments in the Commonwealth, such as Capitol Grill, other places like that, where it's a similar situation, you can't see fully inside and you know they go about their business so we're just looking for a determination to figure out if it's an issue or not um should officers go back there and uh you know um instruct them to remove the window coverings again okay thank you for that thanks um i do not think that the window curtains need to be removed <laughs> i don't think so either i think that's a non-issue i mean yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting history. I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it was put in place because they wanted to make sure during prohibition that people weren't drinking in restaurants. But right. I, mean, that's um, so I don't think it's a problem. I think about so many different bars where you can't really, you know, clearly see in. So, so I don't think it's an issue at all. Yeah. Same. <laughs> yeah. All right, Annie. Do we need? We don't need to vote on allowing them to stay. It's just yeah. Please. Okay. Please, please, yes. Please, um, yes. We do need a vote. Okay, Helen, do you want to make a motion then? Yeah, I guess. Um, uh, I make a motion that we that we make the determination that the curtains um, in the green room are, are not an issue. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Is that essentially what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, having curtains in the green room are, are not in violation of any local ordinance. I don't know if I want to bring in ordinance, but yeah, I don't know. I'm stumbling here. What what kind of motion should I be making here? <laughs> Thank you. Um, th that it, it can be a um can be an iteration of the agenda item. So you yeah. move that the commission determines that the curtains in the green room. Well, do not that's I'm looking at it because it's, it's not about preventing a clear view. I mean, yeah, it prevents a clear view, but we don't care. It's kind of what we're motioning. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
I don't know that that's good. I make I make a motion that this commission has no concern about the curtains in the green room, green room window preventing a clear view of the interior of the restaurant. Does that work? Great. <laughs> I'll second. And uh, Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Captain Caputo. Great. Um, Jennifer, are you back with us? I'm back. Oh, yay. Hello. Hi. Thank you. I apologize for that, Staff. No though. worries. It's no worries. An old, an old school restart solved yeah. it. So you unplug the computer. All right. Hold the button. Yeah. Yep. Now Thank we'll you never for... know how she felt about those green room uh, curtains. But... I know. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Item number four has um, been withdrawn. So moving on to item number five, applications for short-term liquor licenses. We have the Academy of Music, 274 Main Street, Wine and Malt, requesting a fee waiver for May 5th, 2024, 7 to 9.30 for a fireside chat with Elliot Page. Thursday, May 9th, 7 to 10 p.m., the Waylon Jennies. And Friday, May 10th, 7 to 10 p.m., Jethro Tull's Martin Bar, A Brief History of Tull. Hello. Hi. How are you, Melanie? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Um, anything of note that's changing for these events? Nope. All Nothing right. Different. I was um, at the Academy for Saturday and Sunday and had very nice times both evenings. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it was great. Um, commissioners, any questions for Melanie? I don't have any questions. No, no um, questions. Then can we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses as detailed in item five on the agenda, uh, along with the fee waiver. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thanks for coming, Melanie. Thank you so much. Item number six, application for short-term liquor license for Forbes Library at 20 West Street for Tuesday, June 25th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. This is the homebrew workshop with Sparge. It's a wine and malt license, and there is a request for a fee waiver. And who do we have here? Hello. Hi. Hi there. Uh, my name is hey. Priya Terry. I'm the head of adult services here at Forbes. Nice to meet you. Yes. Um, do you want to just let us know a little bit about the event that you're holding? Yeah, um, so we're exploring lots of different ways to introduce people to new skills that they may want to explore on their own. So the group that is going, hoping to come give a workshop on the fundamentals of homebrew is Sparge, or Springfield Area Practitioners of Ales with Regal Grand Esters, which is a big name for people who like to do homebrew at home. Um, they do festivals all over, they have liability license, and they're hoping just to show off some of the equipment, some of the materials, the ingredients, and then also have teeny tiny samples for participants to taste, both in the area of beers and meads and also in things like kombucha, non-alcoholic beer. Nice. Sounds fun. Um, any questions from the commissioners for Priya? No, I don't have any questions. No, no questions. Thank you. Great. Then a motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Forbes Library, along with a fee waiver, as detailed in item six on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Priya. Thank you. Item seven, application for a short-term liquor license for Northampton Center for the Arts Incorporated at 33 Holly Street, Saturday, April 27th, 7 to 11 p.m. for Revelry at 33. This is an all alcohol license and they are requesting a fee waiver. Do we have anyone here from? Joanna's here. I'm, I've asked her to unmute. Oh, there she is. I'm go. trying. I'm having technical difficulties too. You did it. All right. Let me see if I can do the video. <laughs> there, there you are. are. Perfect. Hello. How are you? Okay. How are you? Good. Thank you. I want to let us know about this year's event. Sure. This is our third annual Revelry at 33. It's sort of our fundraising gala party. Um, 
Kayla and Dustin from the Majestic are going to be bartending. We're getting the, it's the only time, the only event that we actually serve like a full, full bar cocktails. Um, so we're getting the liquor from Horizon and it's just going to be, there's a live band, there's a cocktail hour, there's an art exhibit, all the arts for sale, a silent auction. It's a big party. Hopefully a big party. <laughs> Do you need tickets in advance or it's a, how does. It's um yeah. Tickets in advance. You can also get them at the door though. It's $50 in advance, $60 at the door. Okay. Very good. Any questions from the commissioners? Sure. No, no questions. Thank you. The paperwork's complete. Yep. All right, then we're ready for a motion. I will make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Northampton Center for the Arts, along with the fee waiver, as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. Okay, item number eight. We have an application for short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive, Saturday, May 4th, from 12 to 9 p.m. for the May 4th Be With You event and the student <laughs> license. And we do have O'Brien. Hello. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. Good, good. <laughs> You want to let us know about this event? Sure. It's uh, we're just kind of taking advantage of the first kind of May day that uh, we could attach a funny theme to. Uh, we are going to have some food, actually. Uh, going to play off the Cinco de Mayo the next day and serve some tacos, and then also uh, do some Millennial Falcon turkey smash burgers, and uh, hopefully get a screen going and show Star Wars just sort of in the background, and um, have some beers on tap and. Uh, maybe I uh, get some post pride people and uh, just be open on a Saturday serving pints. Nice. Sounds great. Yeah. Any questions for O'Brien? No, sounds good. No. And, and I'm going to pay the fee. I'm paying my fee. <laughs> I was wondering how we're making any money in this city. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had to say something. <laughs> um, I will make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license with full fee for building a <laughs> <laughs> as detailed in item eight on the agenda. I second, especially the full fee. Right? Yeah, all the way. <laughs> in pennies, I'm going to pay it in pennies. Andy's going to love it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Natasha? Yes. <laughs> Helen? Yeah. And yes. Jennifer? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. All right. Item number nine is going to be moved to another month. So moving on to item 10, we have a public hearing on an annual all alcohol package store license for a change of stock interest and change of officers, directors for Table and Vine Incorporated at 136 North Street. And hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Can you let us uh, introduce yourself and let us sure. know? Changing? Sorry, Natasha, we need to open the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Jen uh, Nat Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. And now we're ready for you. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Michael Gold. I'm here on behalf of Table and Vine and Big Y. Um, if you want, I can launch right into why we're here and yep. can apologize in advance for the detail. Yep. So um, as I believe you all know, Table and Vine's a wholly owned subsidiary of Big Y Foods, effectively our liquor division. And as a result of this ownership structure, we're required to obtain approval from the various local licensing authorities in the ABCC whenever there's a transfer of stock in Big Y. And in 2020, we came to you when the then uh, two owners of Big Y, uh, Donald Demore and Charlie Demore, second generation family owners, uh, they made some estate planning moves and they created trust for the benefit of their children that were in the business and they transferred non-voting shares of Big Y stock into those trusts and 
in 2020, 2020 was approved by, by this board and, and by the ABCC. The reason I'm back here today is Donald and Charlie Damore have made more estate planning moves and they've transferred more shares basically into those same trusts, uh, definitely for the benefit of those same children. And similar to 2020, um, we went to the ABCC first. They call it an inverted filing process because it's a little bit complicated and I have to go to the local licensing authorities. And uh, you should have received a letter from Ralph Sacramony of the ABCC uh, saying that they had approved the uh, transaction subject, of course, to your approval. So uh, high level summary of these transactions, uh, Donald and Charlie Demore transferred additional non-voting shares into those same trusts for the same children who are all third generation family owners. At the same time, Donald Demore transferred his voting shares to his son, Michael. Michael is an officer and director of Table and Vine in Big Y. And he is one of those beneficiaries of the other trust. Additionally, then, Charlie and Michael Demore put their voting shares into a voting trust. Uh, Charlie and Michael are the only trustees and the only beneficiaries of that voting trust. Again, estate planning transactions. We also had some uh, changes to the Table and Vine officers and directors. Charlie Demore and Claire Demore have resigned as officers and directors and uh, new additions to the officer and director ranks are Christian Demore and Nicole Demore Schneider, third generation family members, and they are both existing trust beneficiaries and current directors of Big Y. I guess I should point out the there's only one person in all of this documentation who was new and wasn't listed and approved in 2020, and that is a trustee of the Donald Demore Gifting Trust and it's Donald's son-in-law, Todd Schneider. Other than that, we basically rearranged all the deck chairs. So I'm seeking approval for those transactions. All right. Um, I don't see any issue. Everything's approved with the ABCC already. So this is really formality at this level. Are there any questions from the other commissioners? I don't have any questions now. Okay. Then I think we're ready for a motion. Motion to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. So any discussion items that the commissioners wish to review before we vote? Uh, not for me. Okay. Jennifer, you're good? No, I'm good. I'm comfortable with this. Thank you. Great. Then we're ready for the next motion. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the change of stock interest and change of officers directors for Table and Vine Inc. at 136 North King Street. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you for okay. coming. Giving Appreciate us it. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Bye bye. Item number 11, we have another public hearing for an application for change of category in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. This is Gombo Oyster Bar LLC, 159 Main Street. It is a wine and malt license with a cordials permit to an all alcohol restaurant license. And is there a motion to open the public hearing? Uh, motion to open the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Hello, John and Naya. Hey, what's going on? Good. I like, I like your meeting locale. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want to be inside with the music too loud in there, you know? <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think this is just a formality at this point of of tying this up. Is there anything that you wanted to share with us while we have you? We're just really appreciative of everything. It's been a long journey and, you know, we really, we, I admire that you guys are trying your hardest all the time for the businesses around here. And I just want you guys to know that. So thank you. That's nice to hear. Thanks. Um, do the commissioners have any questions for these folks or comments? No, I'm just glad that uh, we're getting this all wrapped up and it's gone the way we all wanted it to go in the first yeah. place. So exactly. and, and it was a long time minute. coming. So thanks for your patience. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, then I, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Um, I move to close the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 
Um, anything commissioners wish to discuss before we formally vote? Do it. Let's do it. Motion, please. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the change of category in accordance with Chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023 for Gumbo Oyster Bar as detailed in Item 11 on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. It's official. Hurrah. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And item 12, public hearing on an application for change of category in accordance with chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023. This is for Masa Mexicano LLC at 176 Pine Street, wine and malt restaurant license to all alcohol restaurant license. So I don't see him, um, but he usually yeah, wouldn't miss a meeting. Um, Do we need him to move this forward? It's up to you all. I I mean I don't I don't believe that we do. We have all the documents. Yeah. I don't want to hold them up. That's what I think. Aside from the joy of him, you know. Of, <laughs> yeah, person, getting I don't know that he needs to be here. Yeah. <laughs> um then is there a motion to open the public hearing? I move to open the public hearing. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And without anybody here, we have nothing to talk about. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? <laughs> For to close the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, for the purposes of discussion, is there anything that either of you wanted to offer before we vote? No, it just feels good to, to get this done. Yeah, it's super exciting. Yeah, this is a nice one to get over the finish line, too. Yep, yeah. it really is. Um, then a motion, please. All right. I make a motion to approve the change of category in accordance with Chapter 76 of the Acts of 2023 for Masa Mexicano at 176 Pine Street, as detailed in Item 12 of the agenda. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Moving on, <clears throat> excuse me, items 13, 14, and 15 um, cannot be addressed today. Annie, can you just give a quick blurb as to why, just for the record? Yeah, so um, the governor submitted a supplemental budget that included pandemic era relaxation of outdoor dining regulations. Um, that has not been approved yet, which means the license commission does not have the authority to authorize alcohol service in temporary dining areas until the budget passes, which is unfortunate that that is getting tied up. It, I guess the sticking points are migrant funding. Um, so the, the supplemental budget is in a conference committee um, and it's kind of stuck there, but it does have, it will be approved. It's just a matter of when. Um, so hopefully by the next meeting, because some are on strong. And so all these all, outdoor dining started today downtown, the blocks were put out. So essentially everyone can set up, but no one can serve alcohol in those spaces yet. Okay. So and if it were to get approved uh, before our next meeting, could we potentially have a special meeting to get, it, get those approved? Again, that would be up to you. You guys, that would be great um, just to get them going because it's I'm sure it, it's hard yeah. to yeah have those spaces yeah. and not be able to serve out there right. and it's going to be very difficult to explain to patrons like oh if you want to drink you got to yeah. go inside and they're like well the whole reason we came down here was to drink outside but yeah mm -hmm. no so I, I think yeah I'm hoping that it gets approved soon and I'd be willing to do a special meeting if, if that'd be happens. great and I also told them that the, the ones that don't have any changes, which I'm pretty sure 95% of them don't from last year, I told them that they probably wouldn't need to come for the meeting because it's just the same exact thing as last year. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. All right, then. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 20, 2024? 
It's all you, Jennifer. Oh, I make a motion to approve the March 2024 minutes. I second that motion. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I know we do have a new business item from yes. Corey Lynch. Yes. Um, so it sounds like, I don't know if you want me to read their request or. Sure. Um, okay. So the Florin Civic and Business Association Approach Drawing Board about hosting a beer garden at the Florence Concert Series uh, beginning March 30th through September 5th. Um, given the community building nature of the event and the host being a civics organization, Drawing Board is requesting a lower cost blanket short-term pouring permit for the weekly events running weekly from 6.30 to 8 p.m. and on May 30th, June 6th, June 13th, June 20th, June 27th, July 4th, July 11th, July 18th, July 25th. August 1st, August 8th, August 15th, August 22nd, August 29th, and September 5th. Um, upon the commission's approval of the lower cost blanket permit, drawing board will submit all appropriate paperwork, including insurance documentation, plan setup, and crowd management review for discussion at the next public meeting. Okay. So this came in, this can't, was it, was it yesterday? I think it was, or today. Um, so my question is, and I mentioned to you, Annie, I ran into O'Brien a few days ago and they had approached him as well. So we had a quick chat about it, but how, what does this trigger then for the event organizers themselves? What type of additional oversight will they be responsible for? Will this mean that they will need an entertainment license? Because I know right now they don't. They don't have one because they're not charging for the music. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So even if something's being sold on the grounds, they we wouldn't need to require them to have an entertainment license. I don't think so because again, they're not they're not ticketing or or charging for the music. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's great. I just want to make sure if we were to move something like this forward that we're clear in terms of responsibilities. Um the other thing I I that crossed my mind is that people do BYOB. Yeah, and I heard Brian O'Brien told me that. Yeah. So there's I think um, I think there's going to be an, like sort of an additional level of of liability for the event holders. You know, it's not just whoever is pouring the beer. I think. Yeah, and I had talked to O'Brien about this, and I thought it would make more sense if Foreign Civic and Business Association applied for the license and then had Drawing Board and Building Eight as the like distributors for the event. Yep. Um, O'Brien said he was going to run that by uh, Andrew. I think his name is. Yep. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. And I, I'm a little like, yeah, that I think is the proper channel to go through because they're going to be the ones holding the liability. There's a lot for them to consider. This is like, you know, it's on a corner. There's kids running around. Yeah. Where, um, yeah. How do they want to manage that aspect of? the you know people bringing their own beverages they wouldn't be able to do that if beverages are being sold <clears throat> right. right so that changes the, the that changes the whole vibe of the event too right yeah it, it seems like it would make sense for drawing board building eight and florence civic to all come together and figure out how they want to apply for this yeah and i'm not opposed to it i just think it's I think it's Florence, the Florence Civic people should be driving the bus, I think. Yeah, and then that way, I mean, I know I don't get a vote, but it, it would feel more, because it's a community organization, 
it would make it more comfortable to, to give that like blanket fee because it's done for it is done for arts night out yep Yeah. Um, Helen and Jennifer, what do you guys think of this proposal? Yeah, I agree um, with what you two are saying. I think that makes a that's a much more logical way for the yeah Florence Civic and Business to approach us with that and be responsible for it. I agree. Yep, I agree as well. Okay, so do you want to communicate that to them, Annie? That They've got to put their heads together and come forward with a. Yeah, um, Corey's on the meeting, so my guess is he heard. Yeah. Um, but I will. I can let O'Brien and Corey know in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, Other than that, I don't have any new business. Do you have any updates on any particular, you know, anything happening in town with people? licenses lawyers <laughs> um i talked to someone um with the bowery group on friday there is still not a lease um they're still invested and eager to come to northampton they are getting a little bit of deal fatigue as he put it um but they are ready to go, but there are other parties dragging their feet. Um, and what's the latest with the Iron Horse? And the Iron Horse, I submitted a official request for reconsideration on their application. It was, well, it wasn't, I submitted to the ABCC, but it was submitted to me by Kristen Scanlon in Boston. Um, and after I submitted that, one of the investigators reached out asking for clarification on something, but it had nothing to do with the DOR certificate. So I think it, I think it's moving forward. Um, she, Kristen um, put up a pretty good case. So um, I think, I think it's moving forward. And attorney Seawald has had conversations with her too. And he reports that he thinks everything's going to work out. That's great. Yeah. So fingers crossed. In time for it's a May opening, right? May. Did, what, does nothing has to come back to us, right? If it, if it's no right now, we're just waiting for the ABCs. Okay. Right. No. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Nope, Jen, that's it. Think that's it. That was a quick meeting as far as they go these days. Yes, right. <laughs> um it's nice we wrapped up some oldies. So I'm <laughs> um we still accomplished a lot. Yes. Yeah. I apologize for missing the curtain discussion. Right. Are we allowed to go back and fi find out your opinion? <laughs> I know, right? That's a good one. <laughs> um yeah, that was it was interesting. It was an interesting historical thing. And I'm just Curious, did somebody call it in? I mean, is that what happened? I think my understanding is that it was an officer who somehow knew this was this archaic law. No, knew this regulation and and brought it up. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So All right then. Motion um, to adjourn. Was that it? Am I second? <laughs> oh, uh, Natasha, did, yes. did she do it? I think I did it. You did it, and Helen seconded. <laughs> okay. Um, Helen, yes, and Jennifer, yes, excellent. Thank mm -hmm. you.